investing in us and our team. Well, you are so welcome. It's such an honor to be on here and to just spend this time together to get to know each other. Um, I think it's really powerful when we can hear other people's stories. Um, stories are so moving. Stories are so, so powerful. So before I get into some of the, the details and the nitty gritty tonight, I want to share with you guys a little bit more about my story and my journey with Plexus. So I actually just celebrated five years with Plexus at the end of November. Um, and when I got started, when my husband and I got started at the same time taking the products, but we were very, very skeptical. Um, Alita Langford is a good family friend of ours. And we used to laugh and make fun of her and we would be like, oh, it's all about gut health. Like, hmm, what is she taking? This is ridiculous. Um, and so we just didn't get it. Like we didn't understand what it meant when she was like, I'm doing plexus full time. I'm like, what does that even mean? Um, you know, and I was like, I was really actually a part of me. I shared with her later. I said, I was really concerned when you guys were like, I'm going all in with Plexus and this is like, you know, going to be a big part of our income. And I'll, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, okay. Like, I don't know what that means. That sounds a little crazy, but all right. And so, um, you know, it wasn't until her um, late husband had, he had passed away. And so my mom um, jumped on board right away to help support her. Um, meanwhile, my mom had made a pact that she would never, ever take Plexus because all of their friends were taking it. She said she wouldn't do it. Um, but as soon as Floyd passed away, my mom was like, we need to support Alita. We need to help her. And my mom was one of those, like really just giving, caring, like she's going to jump in and help you. And so when that happened, she looked at my dad, she's like, we just need to order this stuff to help her. Like, I don't know what else we can do right now, but that's what we're going to do. And I was like, I'm going to pray for you that I'm not going to order your stuff. And so I, you know, send her messages. Like I'm praying so much for you. Like, you know, it was a really difficult season, all these kinds of things. Um, and you know, it took five months after my mom, five or six months after my mom had been taking the product, she came down to visit us. We were living in Florida at the time. And all of a sudden, um, she like was like, oh my gosh, guys, look at how loose my shorts are. And I'm feeling great. And you should really try this Plexus stuff. And my husband turned around and he was like, hold up. He said, are you defending Plexus? He said, cause last time I checked, we made fun of this stuff. Like we, what are you doing defending it? And so I said, okay, you know what, whatever. Like I was really tired. I had just had my second baby. Um, I needed to nap all the time. And so I was like, it can't hurt. My husband is a type two diabetic. And so my mom was like, he really needs slim. And I said, okay, like we were making healthy changes. We were clean eating. And he said, sure. I said, just take all of my information. Here's my card. I want nothing to do with signing up. Just get us the products. Um, and that's it. And so even though at the time, um, our kids were actually on Medicaid. We were really struggling financially. Um, uh, a year before then, my husband had unexpectedly lost his job. We were pregnant with our second baby. Um, I was 20 weeks pregnant. It was the week of my best friend's wedding. And that bomb got dropped on us. We had just moved our family for this job. He had just gotten a nice pay raise with this job. And then out of nowhere, he lost it. And so through no fault of his own, and it was one of those things that just kind of sent us into what we call a series of unfortunate events. And sometimes there are going to be things that come into your life. There are going to be really unfortunate circumstances that are going to happen um, through maybe no fault of your own, but it's just there and it's life, but God knew. And so we, you know, my husband and I were actually just talking the other day and we said, every blessing that has come in our life has actually come from a hardship from something that seemed devastating, that seemed so difficult, that seemed, I don't know how I'm going to get past this, but we never, ever, ever would have said yes to the business side of Plexus if we hadn't been in that difficult season. And so when we got started, even though we needed the money, we didn't start for the business. I was actually doing another network marketing thing at the time. Um, and I ended up switching to Plexus because I started jumping on team calls <laughs> and I started when my mom introduced me on the team page, I literally rolled my eyes 
and was like, I don't know why she's doing this. I have another business. Okay. Meanwhile, I was only making like $200 a month doing all these, you know, parties and stuff like that. But I was like, I roll, what is she doing? Okay. But she was following the process, right? I was the first person she signed up. Um, oh, and she signed me up under the wrong Cheryl Muller. We didn't know for two or three months. That's how like uninvolved she was in it. It was like, none of us knew what was going on. Um, and we laugh now because we're both diamonds and we're like, this is hilarious that we couldn't even get me signed up correctly in the very beginning. Right. And so it took me five months to find my first three people took me five months to go silver. And what I will say is that every single month, Alita would message me and she would be like, Hey, like, do you think you could post? Like, do you think we could find three people? And I would post for her because she was my friend and I would do that. And I said, just don't think this is the month. Nope. Pretty sure it's not going to happen. Not going to be the month, but I got curious. Okay. I started seeing the commission posts on the page and I started seeing what her and Jen Leith were making. And I was like, Hmm, that's interesting. I'm definitely not making this in my other company. And so it got me curious. So I started jumping on team calls and I was getting so much value out of the coaching and training. And I was applying it to my other business. <laughs> and I was like, something's missing here. I was like, why are they not offering this kind, this level of training, this mindset training? The, like it was not just about the products and it was not just about the business. It was about who I was as a person. And I was like, I feel like they're onto something like, this is amazing. And so I would sit on there and I would jump on the calls and um, and then I started like dipping my toe in, um, and I signed up, my aunt signed up as my first person. And then I had a, another random person as my second. And it was, they had some incentive for a water bottle. I'm, and I was like, that's it, Phil, we're signing you up and I'm going silver. <laughs> and I was like, babe, I, I just need your social real quick. Like, can you just give that to me? And he's like, I don't give that out for anything. Like, what are you doing? And I was like, I just, I just need a third, another person that I can get this water bottle. And he's like, are you like, are you kidding me? I was like, you're already taking the products. Like, I'm just going to do this. And so something shifted in me when that happened, when I hit silver. Um, and I will say to you, do not give up on your people who are slow to start. Okay. I was not poster child for, I think this girl's going to go Emerald in a year. I think she's going to be one of my first diamonds. That was not me. Okay. I really had zero influence on social media. Okay. Um, like literally the only people who would like on my stuff was like my mom and my aunt and my best friend. Okay. Um, and so I had to grow that. I had to grow that influence. I had to learn how to add value to other people. I had to learn how to be positive because my mind was naturally negative and people knew that about me. And so people started seeing a shift and they, I would have people who would start messaging me and they're like, oh my goodness, like, I love all the positive things that you're sharing. Thank you for being just, you know, a ray of sunshine in all of the craziness that is, you know, that's on social media. And I was like, oh my goodness, like, this is amazing. People are noticing. And so I was trying to do two things at once. Okay. And my, my husband was like, you got to pick like, which one are you going to do? Are you going to do this thing over here? Or are you going to do Plexus? Cause you can't do both. I was actually signed up for convention for the other company. And then Jen and Alita get on a zoom with me and they're like, it, it was a Vegas was a week away. And they were like, you have to come to Vegas with us. Meanwhile, I had a nursing baby. Right. And I'm like, I'm not going to Vegas. My husband thought that they got bonuses for getting people to convention. And so he was literally like, uh, I really don't know about that. Like, I know that you're saying that you're committed and you want to go to this, but he'd watched me go from thing to thing. And he was like, ah, uh, like, I really don't know about this. And he said, if you go and you try this, he said, you have to commit to me for doing this for a year. Like you have to give it a year commitment. And I said, I will do that. Like I'm, I'm going to do this. And so I, I, it was crazy. I ended up sharing a room. It was me, Alita, Lisa, and Latoya. Latoya and I were sharing the bed with my baby. Okay. I'm like, I flew out to Vegas by myself with a baby. That was the first time I had ever traveled to someplace that was not family. And so what I will say is as you're on this journey, it starts with taking that first scary step 
right? For me, that was saying, I'm going to go all in with Plexus. And yes, on a week's notice, I'm going to fly out to Vegas with my baby for something I don't even fully know and grasp and understand, but I'm going to do it because my friends seem to believe so strongly in this. And my friends seem to believe so strongly in me, which at the time I really wasn't sure why, because I had just hit silver and it took me five months to do it. Like, I don't know if I would have, if I would be rushing out to seek people who were like me and be like, you've got to come to convention. This is going to change your life. This is going to be amazing. Like, but I've learned that everyone is capable of going to the top. Okay. Everyone comes in and everyone is capable of doing it. It doesn't matter the skills that you come in with because everything can be learned. Everything that I have done in my business, I have learned. Yes, we all have certain skill sets and certain things that we are gifted in, but you have to grow those giftings, right? It, it's We can't just rely on talent alone. We have to learn. And if there's something in your business that you're sitting down and you're like, I just don't know how to do that. Okay, well, ask yourself, what do I know? What do I know how to do? And for the other things that you're like, I really am struggling in this area. There is YouTube, there is podcasts, there is your upline, there is sidelines. There is so many resources out there. If there is a skill that you feel like you are lacking, you can learn it. Yeah, you might suck at it at first. I mean, really, you might be terrible at it and that's okay. You might fall on your face. You guys, I remember one of the very first VIP Zoom calls that I did, it was like, a, it was like a really big deal. Like I was stepping in for someone. I might've even been stepping in for Jen. It was like, oh my goodness, why are they letting me do this? I had a white shirt on and I spilled my pink drink all over myself on this Zoom call, okay? And I was like, man, that was just a really important call and I just spilled my drink everywhere. But you know what? I looked at it, I laughed. I was like, I'm a real person. And the next time I'm gonna do even better. Okay. And so don't be afraid to be bad at things at first, you know, and don't be afraid if people don't show up. Okay. So I went to convention as a brand new silver with a nursing baby. And when I was at convention, that's when I a thousand percent caught the vision for what this business could be. And so I want to encourage you get to in-person events and invite as many people on your team to get to those in-person events. They might not understand it. They might think you're crazy, um, but invite them anyway and keep inviting them and get on a Zoom call and drag your uplines upline in on a Zoom call. Even Jen says to this day, she, ne she has never gotten on a Zoom call like that and told somebody to come to convention. And she's like, I'm so glad Alita had me get on that call because look at what happened after this, okay? And so- we have convention this year. We're going to be in person, you guys. Like, that's amazing. You want to get as many people on your team to live in-person events when you can. And when I was there, I just remember all of the top earners. They were, I was standing in the very back. I'm like bouncing my baby in the baby carrier. And um, I'm watching them and I'm hearing their stories. And I realized that there was nothing different between them and me. I realized that they were introverts. Some were extroverts. Some had like less than 200 friends on Facebook and they made it to the very top of the company. And I thought if they can do it, I can do it too. And so there might be someone's story that you really resonate, you really connect with. And you're like, you know what? Because they can do it. I can do it too. And so I will never forget um, when we were there, the speaker that year was Les Brown. And I absolutely love that man. Okay. And so he stood up there and he told us about this video that he wanted us to watch every day. He wanted us to go home and watch this video every day for 30 days and it would change our life. Well, when we left convention, I remember standing there and I said, I will come back here one year from now and I will be Emerald. I will walk that stage as an Emerald. I don't know how, I really have no clue. Cause at this point, I think I had maybe five people on my team. <laughs> and I was like, 300 seems like a lot of people for emeralds, but we're going to do this. And I made myself my very first little vision board and it had a little emeralds on it. And it said emeralds by convention. What would that have been? 2018. Um, and I was like, I'm going to do this. And I made it like right there, right then. Um, and I showed, I remember, and I like showed it to Alita. 
it. And I was like, listen, I'm going to be Emerald in a year. Like mark my words, I'm leaving here and I'm going to be Emerald in a year. And so when I went home, I said, you know what? He said that we should watch this video every day for 30 days. And I was like, I am going to watch this video every day for a year. (laughs) And so, and there were a few days that I missed, but I will say, I mean, honestly, for that entire year, I pretty much watched this video almost every single day. And you can go to events like that. You can go to convention and you can get hyped up and then you can come home and you can do nothing, right? You can listen to this call. You can get massively fired up. You can be so excited and be like, Megan's story was so inspirational. I love this. I'm running after my dreams. And then you can do nothing, okay? But if you actually want to see those dreams come to fruition, you have to do something about it. And so that was one of the first steps for me. I drew my line in the sand and I said, this is what I'm doing. Okay. I put my goal out there. I wrote it down physically. I made a little dream board, a little graphic for myself, um, which eventually turned into my, you know, my screensaver on my phone. And I said, this is what I'm doing. I was, I'm going to look at this all the time. And I came home and I told my husband what we were going to do. And I got so fired up and I called my very first team call. Okay. A little while after that, I was really on fire. I had dug deep into my why I knew exactly why I was doing this because at the time my husband, he, so he ended up starting his own marketing company because he just wasn't finding any work. And so I remember watching him taking on clients that he should have never taken on simply because our family needed the money. And I remember just watching how tired he was and how exhausted he was and for us to barely be making ends meet. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do something about this. Like we're not going to stay in this situation anymore. Like I'm going to, I'm going to change our family. Mind you, I really didn't have any work experience. Okay. In college, I worked as a barista for six months and then I nannied. And when my husband and I got married, I told him, hey, honey, I just want you to know that I am never going to work. (laughs) And he was totally okay with it. I said, I just want to stay at home and raise babies. And I, I had zero, you know, like there's some people who have like really big aspirations of like careers and all that stuff. That was never me. I was like, if I don't have to lift a finger and work, I'm not going to like, I, I want to be at home with our kids. It's what I want to do. And so when I said like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, like, I'm going to run after this. He had some really serious doubts, but he made an agreement with himself, even though he never told me that he didn't believe in me at the time, he made a pact with himself that said, okay, I'm going to watch her do this, but I'm not going to be the reason why she doesn't succeed. Like, I'm not going to sabotage this, you know, because he definitely could have, he could have planted a lot of seeds of doubt. He could have done a lot of things. And instead we really linked arms together and started running after this because he had a lot of business knowledge and experience. Experience, whereas I did not. And so we came home and we started, you know, we started making a game plan. I jumped on, called my very first team call. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. At this point, I had signed up a bunch more people because I was like really on fire. Um, and the only people to show up to my call was I was at my mom's in Tennessee and uh, my mom, who was in the next room and my husband and my aunt and Alita. Okay. And I was like, okay, like, I guess we're just going to start and record this because nobody's jumping on, you know? Um, and I poured my heart and soul into this zoom. I actually still have it recorded. I need to pull it. Um, and so I got on and I like poured my heart and soul out why we're going to do this, how my family and I, we were going to, to, I was going to do this so that we would have the flexibility to be able to pay off our student loan debt. We had a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt hanging over our heads. Okay. And I said, we're going to move out to Tennessee because we want to be closer to my parents. And you guys, we are there. Like we are literally living in Tennessee. We are right next door to my parents. Like that dream happened. And that dream never would have happened if it wasn't for Plexus or it definitely wouldn't have happened as soon. Okay. And so I remember getting off of that and I thought, man, nobody cares what I have to say. Like, how am I going to lead this team to Emerald in a year if nobody will even get on a call? Right. And so those seeds of doubt start creeping into our minds. Um, and we start to, we start to discourage ourselves and we talk, start to talk negative about ourselves. And we're like, I can't do this, but all the different things that are going to, you know, that will flood our minds. 
And so that's why watching that video every single day was so powerful because we have to daily check our minds, you know, hourly, every second sometimes, right? Like depending on what the day holds, we got to take those thoughts captive. And so if you are constantly plugging your mind with positivity, you're going to get something new out of it. I think every single time that I listen to it, I mean, even to this day, I'll probably listen to it like once a week, once a month, like, um, and I, I'm, you know, I'm constantly infiltrating with different things, different podcasts, different books, all that different kind of stuff. But every day you want to make sure that there's something in there that you are listening to, that you are feeding your mind, that you are feeding your soul. Um, if not that negativity can really take over. And so, um, you know, so I was like, okay, like we're, we're doing this. Like, it doesn't matter what happens. Okay. Then we started ranking up really fast. Okay. We went gold. And then the next month, we went senior gold and the month that we went senior gold, I had an entire gold leg drop off. I had somebody who told me that she was going to go to Hawaii with me. And this is what the Lord had called her to do. And then all of a sudden she had an event at her house and nobody showed up and she threw in the towel and she quit. And I was like, uh, that's like half my team, <laughs> you know, like you're going from gold to senior gold. That's a really big chunk. Um, and so, and also that month I had someone who, um, absolutely. It was our pastor's wife at the time completely berated me when I tried to talk to her about the products. Meanwhile, she had asked me, is this going to help with eczema? And so I remember when all of that happened, I mean, I broke down in tears and my husband called Alita and he was like, um, you need to come talk to her because she is a mess right now. And so sometimes there are just going to be certain people that are going to say things that are just going to hit you differently. That's going to make you start to doubt and question what you're doing, going to start to doubt and question those big dreams and those big goals that you put out there. Um, and so you have to make sure that you are surrounding yourself with the right people, with the people that when that moment happens, they are going to breathe life into you, that they are going to let you feel all the emotions, but they are not going to let you stay there. And if you have team members who are coming to you, who are frustrated, who are discouraged, all these things, let them get it all out. Let them feel the emotions, but don't let them stay there because that's not going to do any good. Come up with a plan. What are you going to do? What are they going to be listening to? What's the next steps? Because so often when that happens, we just want to freeze. We like clam up, we want to freeze and we feel like we don't know what to do, but just take a step, right? It doesn't have to be a run. It doesn't have to be anything huge, but just take a step in those moments because the longer that you stay still, um, the harder it is going to be to move, right? We expand a lot of, we spend a lot of bandwidth and energy, um, you know, it's a like exercising, going to the gym. What's hard is not necessarily going to the gym. What is difficult is getting yourself up off the couch and deciding that you are going to actually go right. Um, and so don't let yourself stay down, surround yourself with those people who are going to lift up, encourage you and reach out, right? Like make sure that you are reaching out. It's what, this is what I see happen all the time with people. They go into isolation right? Have you ever seen somebody just like off in the, you know, plexus witness protection program. And it's like, they just like drop off all of a sudden they were like really on fire and they were doing really amazing. And you don't hear from them. Right. And nine times out of 10, when that happens, it's because somebody either like said something really negative to them. They had a really bad experience, like something happened externally to them and they really took it to heart and they didn't know how, they didn't know what to do with it. They didn't know how to overcome it. So look for those signals. If you see someone who's starting to step away, something probably happened in their life or in their business that they didn't tell you about that really hurt them. That was very difficult. And so oftentimes we try to make it mean something about us and we take it personal and we're like, Oh my goodness, she's not messaging me back. I, what is she doing? Like, that is so rude. Why would she not get back to me? Like, and uh, we create these crazy stories in our head when really they were hurting, like they were hurting. Somebody made them really upset. Somebody said something nasty or they, they tried to go after a goal and they missed it. Like so many times it's these external things that are happening. And so when you see someone retract, you see someone pull away, reach out to them, ask them what is going on. And then just say to yourself, this means nothing about me that they have stepped back. Okay. We can't mean, let those things mean something about us. Um, 
Okay. So into that, that first year. Okay. So we hit that obstacle, right? The first obstacle of I did my first team call and nobody showed up. Right. And then we started ranking up um, that next month. I had an entire gold leg drop off the month that we went senior gold. Then my husband and I, we moved, he took a job in Virginia. And so we moved. And one of the limiting beliefs that I had in my life was that I could not do this business if he was not at home because he was such a huge help when he was at home because he was working for himself. He could help with the kids. He could help with my business, all these different things. Well, now he was going back into an office. And I said to myself, I can't, I don't think I can do this if he's not here with me. And I set a really big goal. I was like, you know what? We're ranking up month after month. We're going gold, senior gold. We're hitting Ruby in September. Well, I did not hit Ruby in September. And that about near crushed me because it was the first big goal since I had drawn my line in the sand that I missed. And I don't do well with that. Um, I'm kind of one of those like achiever, perfectionist, personality type people. And I was crushed. I knew we were getting really, really close to the end of the month. And I just, we were too far from hitting it. And so I had a choice. I could sit there and I could sulk or I could pivot and focus on helping my team get some more signups for that month. So we would hit it the next. This was back before you got points for new signups. This was like old school plexus where you had to, you know, they had to order the next month for you to see five points in your back office. Um, and so I was crushed and I, I mean, like I cried so much. I'm a crier, but I cried a lot because I thought, it's happening. Like I believed, I told myself the story that if Phil went back into an office, I couldn't run this business. And you know what happened? I missed a goal. And I said, see, see, this is what's happening because our brains will go to prove you correct. They want to prove you right. So if you have these negative thoughts and these things that you believe about yourself, and then all of a sudden, everything around you is going to start proving why that is correct. And it's not that those things are true, but your brain wants to prove to you that you are right. So if you switch those thoughts and you start believing things like, no, I had to switch my thoughts. I said, you know what? No, I can do this if he is not here at home. And I started listing off all of these reasons why I am a great leader and why I am going to be able to pursue my goals and dreams and why my dreams are possible. And you know what? The next month we hit it. We hit Ruby. Um, and uh, I tell you guys that stuff because a lot of times if you look at someone and you're like, wow, how did they hit Emerald in a year? How, how does one do that? Right? Well, there's a lot of things that go into it. It seems like, well, they must've just been winning every single month. Right. And then we hit that. And then we started dropping below Ruby points, November and December happened. It was my first time, like in the seasons and, and you will come to learn in network marketing. There are seasons. There are certain seasons that typically have higher signups and there are typically seasons where points are a little bit lower. It ebbs and flows just chill. Okay. I panicked. <laughs> I was like, oh no, what is happening? We hit this goal and we're going backwards, okay? So November and December, I was like, okay, I don't really know what we're doing. We're just gonna like keep trucking along. You know, January came and we're like game on, okay? I was like, we have like five months left to hit this goal. Like, how are we going to do this? You guys, my kitchen um, was like, <laughs> we had post-it notes plastered everywhere. We had a white kitchen and I had hot pink post-it notes everywhere with affirmations with like, I am the master of retention, like all of these different things that I wanted to make sure that I was pouring over myself. Um, and people would come to my house and they'd be like, you got some great decor going on over there. <laughs> like what's happening in your kitchen? Um, which also led to great conversations about Plexus. Um, and so we had to really dig down deep, really had to master some of that mindset. Um, and so we hit Senior Ruby in that March. Um, and the month before we hit Emerald, um, I started counseling. Actually, Alita gifted me some sessions with our favorite counselor, who I still use to this day. Um, and she was like, there's going to be so many other things that are going to come up as you're going for this big goal. I want you to be able to talk to somebody about it because it's going to help you have those massive breakthroughs. Okay. And so I spent, I spent so much time 
visualizing what 1500 points in my back office was going to look like. I could feel it. Okay. I let the emotions take over before it ever happened. Um, because you have to, in your mind, you have to be able to see that goal first before you can actually achieve it. You have to believe that your dream is possible. And that's a phrase that I say over and over and over again, because it's something that Les Brown talked about in his video. He talked about how your dreams are possible. And in our story, you know, I want you to see that you cannot, you can do anything that you put your mind to. Okay. Going Emerald in a year with not really having a lot of influence, taking five months to go silver seemed to be impossible. Okay. But we did it. Okay. We hit Emerald. We did it in a year. You think like, that's the end of the story, right? That's great. That's amazing. Um, the story does not end there. Okay. What happened after we hit Emerald was a whole lot of self-sabotage. Okay. We hit this massive goal. I'm like, okay, like we can breathe a sigh of relief, right? Like so many times that happens. And then we did not hit Emerald again for like almost a year. Okay. That will play mind tricks on you. That will really mess with you. That will make you believe it have imposter syndrome where you feel like you are not really the leader that everybody thinks that you are. Um, and so we never dropped below a thousand points, but when it got down to a thousand, I was like, oh no, what is going on? And I will tell you a few things that happened during that season. I actually used to never share this part of my story with people because I did not want anyone to know that I hit Emerald and I lost rank. I was like, that happens to people. Like I was like mortified. Like nobody can find this out about me. Like this is terrible. Um, but I have actually come to realize that this part of my story has spoken to more people than the, than the highlights, than the, the rah-rahs, the amazing things, because it's real. Not that hitting the amazing goals isn't real, but the trenches is what allows you to get to the next mountaintop. Okay. And so for me, after we hit it and points started going backwards, I wasn't super worried in the beginning. I was like, we weren't that far off. And I was like, yeah, we'll just hit it again next month. And then that didn't happen. And then we got real close and I was like, well, we'll just hit it again next month. And then as I saw the points start going backwards, I really started doubting myself, like as a leader, as like, was all of this just fake? Like, did I just have a really good run one time? And like, we hit this goal and we'll never be able to do it again. Cause there was one point where I thought, where I want to go diamond and I can't even see 1500 points in my back office. Like, how is this going to happen? And so I did a lot of counseling during that time. And what I uncovered was that I had this underlying belief that you could not be a great businesswoman and a great mom. I thought that you had to choose because I'm going to be totally honest. I used to judge working moms before I worked because I, I thought that like, in order to be a really great mom, you had to be a hundred percent in at home all the time. Right. And that's not true. Okay. And so I really deep down what was uncovered through all of that counseling was that I now, as someone who had never wanted to work, I now had the responsibility of a massive organization and I thought I could not balance it. That's why the sabotage started happening because I was believing the lie that you could not be a great mom and also a successful businesswoman. But you guys, that took like five months of intense counseling for me to be able to figure that out. Okay. And so if there's a season where you feel like you're stuck or you feel like you're going backwards, start to dig deep. Okay. Cause you got to uncover those roots of what is happening. If you don't get to the root of your mindset issues, if you don't get to the root of what's really going on and you don't dig those things out, it's going to keep coming back. It's going to keep coming back to get you because you didn't deal with the source. There might be a lot of other symptoms. There might be a lot of other sabotage symptoms that are happening, but you have to dig down. And this is the personal growth part that is hard. It is very, very difficult to look at yourself, to look at your mindset and ask yourself, what is really going on here? 
Like, why am I feeling this way? What is happening? It's a lot easier to just pretend like those feelings don't exist. It's a lot easier to pretend like that isn't happening. But the more that you can dig down deep um, when things are difficult, the quicker you're going to be able to overcome it. Okay. So I uncovered those lies. And I remember I did a call with Jen Leaf, because my counselor said, why don't you talk to somebody who you feel like does a really good job of balancing work and life? Like who's someone in your business do you admire? And I was like, Jen, like, I love Jen. I love the way she runs her business. I love the way she homeschools her kids. Like, so I got on the phone with her. Um, and I remember there was even a point, um, that I actually got on the phone with Alita and she was like, tell me, something that you love about Plexus right now. Cause I was in like a, not a great place mindset. Right. And she was like, tell me something that you love about Plexus right now. And it was like dead silent. Like I didn't say anything. Um, and she was like, and if you're feeling in this moment right now, like there's absolutely nothing that's okay. Like you can sit there, you can be in that moment. And she let me feel all the things that I was feeling, right? Because sometimes we try to downplay like the discouragement and we try to downplay what's going on in our minds with like this toxic positivity. And we're trying to kid ourselves that everything's fine when it's not, okay? And so all of that negative energy gets trapped inside of you if you don't fully let it out. It's why tears are so healing. There's actually like healing properties in your tears. And when you let all of those things out, and so, um, so we sat there, so I got on the phone with Jen and I just talked to her and, and I said, I said, Jen, did you ever have moments where you were like, cause she had, you know, she always wanted to be a stay at home mom too. Right. And so now she has this massive organization. I'm like, how, how did you do that? How do you manage to balance both? And she said, Megan, I remember back to how hard things were before. And she was like, nothing is as hard as that compared to what we have now. She was like, there are just so there's an abundance of blessings with plexus that we just did not have before. And so she's like, when you're having those moments, right. When you're having those moments where you feel like, I just don't know if I can do this, remember what life was like before. So I would go back and I would picture the moments where my husband was sitting there overworked, exhausted. And then on top of it, we had this hundred thousand dollars of student loan debt, right? Like remind yourself what that used to be like, what that used to feel like and all of the blessings that are associated with Plexus. And then she asked me a very honest question. And she said, well, do you feel like the Lord's telling you to quit? And I said, well, no, he's not. And she was like, okay. She was like, well then like get to work <laughs> kind of thing. You know, like she told me this advice and she was like, okay, now like go do something about it. Right. You're, you're called here for a reason and a purpose. And the Lord is not telling you to stop that. And I will tell you, deciding to jump back in fully to uncover all those things, it was like stopping the ball from rolling down the hill. Okay. It takes a lot more work to stop the downward momentum to then get it going up. There are going to be a few months where you were like working and grinding and doing all the things and you're not seeing the fruit of it. You're like, where are the signups? Where is the point growth? What is happening? Okay. And you're going to sit there and you're going to be like, this is so difficult. Um, hang on, hang on in those moments, those moments. This is the thing about growth, right? We all think that growth kind of just like goes like this, right? That it should be very even. It is not. There is a thing called the compound effect, right? That you're going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then all of a sudden it skyrockets. Okay. We, that is exactly what happened in our business. We re-ranked Emerald. We never went back again after that. Okay. Um, and then a whole nother year went by. We hit it solidly. We were doing great. I was I threw myself into personal growth. I was doing coaching. I was going to retreats. I was doing counseling. I was doing all of these things. And in February of 2020, I was at 1700 points. Okay. And I was like, when is it coming? <laughs> like, when is it coming? I feel like I've been doing a lot of work. I feel like I've been doing a lot of mindset things. And there are going to be seasons where nobody sees what you're doing where you are really the only one who knows how hard you're working, the mindset junk that you were uncovering, that you were working through. But friends, the compound effect will take place. I promise you, okay? And so we were at 1,700 points in February of 2020. In June, 
of, or yes, in June of 2020, we were at 6,200 points. Okay. In, in May of that year, we actually double ranked Sapphire and Diamond, which is something that has only been done like less than 10 times in the whole company. Okay. And it was the craziest, scariest, audacious goal that we had ever put out there. But something that my, that we've always done in our business is that we like to push the envelope on what people think are possible simply to show others that they can do it too. So that might not be your thing, right? Your thing might not be going for the shock and all and the double rank Sapphire diamond and the, we're going to go for Emerald in a year. Like I realize that's not normal, but I want you to know that if I can do this, you can do this too. Okay. And so we put that goal out there. I wanted to vomit. Okay. Sometimes when you put big, scary goals out there, you instantly regret it. I went live on our team page on the first day of the month. And I was like, y'all know that we're going for Sapphire. We're actually going for diamond this month. We're going to double rank this month. And then I was like, oh, I should not have put that out there because if I don't put the goal out there, right, then nobody's going to know when I fail. But if you put it out there for the world to see, and then you don't hit it, oh, it's like, that feels like it hurts. But you know what? You put more on the line when you put the goal out there. Okay. And so we did that. And I will say the single most belief building thing that I did that month that was so different than any other months in our business. One, it was the compound effect, you guys. Okay. It was the two years, two years of plowing through every leadership, personal growth book that I possibly could doing the coaching, um, you know, investing in retreats, doing all of these things that nobody saw. And my points sure didn't reflect it right? It would have been a lot easier to just throw in, like at that point, just be like, you know what? I'm just going to stay Emerald forever. Like I'm never going to reach that goal. And you know, everybody had a 2020 because sometimes I look back at that and I'm like, well, it only happened because of, because of 2020, because of COVID, because everyone was home. But you know what? That is not true. That's not true because everybody had a 2020, but not everybody grew 4,700 points in two months. Right. And so I want you to know that when you do those things, when you put in that work, when you plant those seeds, the harvest will come. The compound effect will take place, but it might take longer for you. And that's okay. And so many times when we're at that point where we're like, is it ever going to move? Then it is going to skyrocket for you. Okay. And so, um, I want to, I want to dive in with you guys, um, Oh, okay. I just want to share this one last part of my story um, before I do some, some vision casting things with you guys. Okay. So we hit re-entry points, right? The next month. Um, and I dawdled around with deciding to re-enter. Um, and I was like, are we going to do it? Are we not? Um, and so that September I, you know, I finally re-entered, went silver. Um, and then I was very indecisive and I went back and forth and I was like, are we going to build my reentry? Are we going to build my husband's leg? Cause he was sitting at senior goal. We're like, which are we going to do? Being indecisive in your business is such a waste of energy and bandwidth. Okay. Um, I finally decided, um, in October, that I was really going to start like working my reentry. Okay. That was like a year. I sat on my reentry for a year at silver. Okay. As a diamond ambassador sat at my reentry at silver. Um, and I share that with you guys, because I just kept telling myself in my head, it'll just happen when it happens. It does not just happen when it happens. Okay. In order to have your dreams actually become a reality, you have to draw your line in the sand. You have to say when you are going to hit those goals, you have to use reverse engineering to map them out. And when I say reverse engineering, I mean, okay, if you have a goal one year from now, okay, you got to break that down into what is the immediate next month goal? What is the three month goal? What is the six month goal? What is the nine month goal? What does that look like? What are the chunk sizes that I need to accomplish and make happen in order for this dream to happen? Okay. I had so much self doubt. I had so many negative beliefs about, could I do this again? Right. I built it all the way to the top can we do this again? And you know what? I did not believe in myself. I did not believe that I could do it again. 
which sounds crazy. Cause you think like, once you get to diamond, you've got this mindset stuff all figured out, but you don't like, I sat at silver for a year, a year, you guys, I just hit senior silver on my re-entry last month. Um, and I think I was more proud of that. <laughs> I was a diamond and I was like, we're doing this. Like we're doing this again. I set a date for when I want to go for Emerald again. And I like cried when I said it because you have to attach that emotion to it. Okay. And that's kind of what I'm going to go into, um, in this next little piece with you guys. Um, I am going to do a little bit of vision casting with you. Okay. So I'm going to play a song. Um, and I want you guys, as I'm doing this, I want you to just for a second. Okay. I want you to just take a step back. Okay. I want you to take a step outside of your situation. I want you to just get away from just like the day to day that is flooding your mind for a second. I want you to zoom out and get a bigger picture for your life than what is here right now. Because I will tell you, it is so easy to just go into survival mode. It is so easy to just settle for where we are because it's what's comfortable to us, okay? It's what we've always known. When my when my kids were on Medicaid and we had $100,000 of student loan debt hanging over our heads, you guys, we were in survival mode. Plexus taught us how to dream big again. Okay. We paid off that hundred thousand dollars in, in 15 months. Okay. We, um, our kids are off Medicaid. Um, and we were able to move out to Tennessee, which was always a dream of ours. All of the things that were once just a vision on our dream board. We, I've made three dream boards in my time with Plexus. Okay. We're on our third one. And right now we are crossing things off of that. Okay. Literally every single thing that has been on there, we have been able to cross off and cross off and cross off, including the massive pool that we are putting in right now that is happening. They just started construction yesterday. You guys, these are things that like, I just, I never thought were possible before. Okay. But when you can just step back out of survival mode for just a second and imagine what your life could actually look like. Okay. Life is short. Life is so short. And I do not want you guys to wake up in 10 years and say, I wish I would have taken my family on more vacations, or I wish I would have been able to spend more time with my kids, or I wish I would have been able to pay for those extracurricular activities, or I wish I would have been able to go on more dates with my husband. That's something my husband and I, we go on weekly dates. That's a non-negotiable. We were not going on dates before Plexus. Okay. We couldn't afford it. I didn't want to leave my kids, all these different kinds of things. Okay. I don't want you guys to wake up in 10 years and say, I wish I would have paid off all of this debt by now, or I wish I would have been able to give more to a family in need, or I wish I would have been able to put in that pool or whatever is that big thing that's on your dream board. If you don't start making changes now in 10 years, you're going to wake up and you're going to be like, what just happened? Where did that time go? Why are we still struggling? Why are we still in the same place? today. Okay. And I want you guys to walk away from this call, knowing and believing that your dreams are possible too. It's not just possible for me. Okay. I am a hot mess mom who had zero work experience, who didn't know what she was doing, who just dared to dream bigger and dared to believe that it was actually possible and kept that vision at the forefront of my mind. I connected my emotions to that vision and I visualized what our life would look like. I had already experienced it in my heart, in my mind before we ever hit it. So when that moment actually came, I was like, I've been waiting for this. I, I know, I knew, I knew this was going to happen. And then it's time to dream bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. And so we were not just designed, you guys, just to clock in, clock out, retire at 60, and then start living our life. You can start living your life right here right now. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play this song and I want you guys to just close your eyes. And I want you guys to take a deep breath and I want you to forget about your to-do lists. And I want you to just zoom out for your life. 
aside for a minute. I want you to think about what life would look like if finances did not dictate your decisions. What would that feel like? What would your life look like? What are the things that you would say yes to instead of always having to say no? What is that dream that's in your heart? And I want you guys to know that your past does not define you. What other people have said about you does not define you. Your fears do not define you. You were made for a purpose and you were made for so much more. I want you to know that you are an overcomer. The generational curses will be broken because of you, because of what you said yes to, because you did not let fears stand in your way, because you could see bigger. You could see a bigger vision for your life, for your family, things that people thought were impossible. We serve a God who can do the impossible, who can move the mountains that seem like they cannot be moved. And you will leave a legacy for your family. You will leave an inheritance for your children and for their children, and it starts now, and it starts today. And I want you to think about what your life could look like. I want you to open your mind to things that you thought were impossible. What would you go after? What would you do if you knew that you would not fail? What would you say yes to? And if you're feeling emotional, that's a good thing. Lean into that, don't try to stop that. But I want you to get a very clear picture in your head of the things that you want to go after, of the things that you want to run after because you know that your dreams are possible. You know that you can do more. You know that you were made for so much more. And it doesn't matter the obstacles that will come up. It doesn't matter the hardships that are gonna be there because there is so much more. Let yourself sit in that. Let yourself go to a place that you haven't gone to before. Okay, I want you guys to open your eyes. And I want you to take those things that came to mind tonight. I want you to take those things that you envisioned that you felt move in your soul, those things that maybe were awakened, maybe dreams that were awakened for the very first time that you didn't even know were there, that you didn't even know was inside of you. And I want you to write those things down, okay? Don't just get off of this call and then immediately forget about those dreams and forget about what was placed in your heart right? And sometimes it can really seem so scary to even just write those things down, right? But you don't want to forget it. You don't want to forget those things that were awakened inside of you. You don't want to squash that fire. You don't want to put that fire out before it has even had a chance to burn. And so I just want to encourage you guys tonight. There are going to be some things that you're going to write down on there um, that not everyone's supposed to know. There are certain people in our lives who are in our inner circle who, who it's okay for us to share those things with, those close shareholders, right? There are some people who don't understand your big dreams, right? There are some people who are not going to get the things that you go after. There are people who thought we were crazy, who have thought that we were absolutely insane, 
for what we were doing. But you know what? My husband and I have been able to do more ministry because of Plexus than we were ever able to do when we were elders in a church, because we are here helping people overcome fears, right? We are not only helping people live better lives because they feel good, but we are helping people to, to overcome their financial burdens, right? We're helping people to be able, we need more money in the hands of good people so that they can do more good things for the kingdom. Okay. And so I want you guys, I want you to, after you've written some of those things down, don't just forget about it. Okay. I want you to share with some people who are really close to you, some of those dreams that were on there so that you can talk about it. You can dream about it together. Okay. Get your shareholders in who are in your family. You know, that's something that, that we did. Um, you know, my family was always in on this. We would sit down when we're going after big goals, you know, even my kids, right? Like they knew, they knew that when we were going diamond, that they were going to get quads. Like they didn't fully understand all the things, but they understood they, they have watched their lives change, right? Like they, they have been with us through every step of the journey, the lives that they are living now. Like, it's so different than what it would have been before you guys. It's so, so different. And I want you to know that that is also possible for you. It absolutely is possible for you to be able to do that. And so if you're sitting here and you're like, okay, like, that's great. I, I have some of these dreams. I have some of these visions. Um, how do I create that dream board? How do I, how do I goal set? What do I do with all of that? Um, I have put together a vision casting workshop that's going to start on January 1st. And so I'm going to go through kind of some of those things step by step um, because it, we want to see everyone succeeding. We want to see everyone reaching their goals to be able to do the things that we've done. Um, but there's there's a lot of roadblocks that we have to overcome through that, right? Um, there's a lot of tools in visualization and connecting those emotions like you did tonight. That's one of the biggest things that you guys can do is connecting that emotion to what your dreams are and taking a few minutes every day to, to sit in that and to visualize that and to let yourself feel it. Okay. So, um, thank you so much for letting me share with you guys tonight. Um, you know, for letting me do that little vision casting exercise with you. And I'm just, I'm really excited to hear about the things, you know, that came to light, um, tonight after you did that. Amen. Thank you, Megan, so much. So you guys, when I heard that Megan was offering this workshop, I messaged her and I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? What's going on? And then she's like, girl, I got PDFs. I'm going to have videos. She's doing all the things. And so I was like, oh, please, please, can we come and play? And she was like, of course, you're welcome to. So right after this call, you guys, we're going to be dropping a link with all the information so that you guys can go ahead because we want to go ahead. We're finishing 2021 strong, right? But also like, coming up with those visions and those dreams and tapping into all the things that Megan was sharing tonight, that emotional attachment, because when you have that deeper why, when you know that you know that you know why you're doing it, when stuff hits the fan, when stuff happens, when it doesn't go as according to plan as you thought it was, or it looks totally different, it's okay. You still have a really sound grasp on why you're doing what you're doing and ultimately who you're doing it for. And so we're really excited to be able to lock shields with Megan and to be able to offer this workshop to you guys coming January 1st. So keep an eye out for that information that's gonna drop right after. But I know Megan, Kenny was over here, like write this down. He got his phone out, he's taking notes. He was like, oh, you just killed it. Cause he's like, call with Megan, exclamation point. <laughs> he's all in his notes. So I'm gonna pass this off. Kenny is our mindset oh, coach. He does a really great fun. job. Um, it is eight o'clock, but I'm going to give him. No, I don't have enough time. It's five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Right. You guys, Megan, you did minutes. an awesome job. What was the Les Brown video? Because I watch him and I love him. What was um, the video I will was? send it over to Jenna so that you guys can watch it. I think somewhere in the title, it's like your dreams are possible. It has something like that in it, but I'll send you the exact one. All right. That, that was super cool. I love your dreams because. That's what I have been doing lately, learning how to visualize the dream, 
writing it down and then it's like your res just kicking in and you start seeing things in the natural the world like buying a new car and you're excited next thing you know the car you want to buy is everywhere and you're visualizing you're seeing it and you're going for it so i love that the one thing i did want to uh just address or not address but just talk about is on our flight here to go see peyton jenna gives me a book of john maxwell and said here read this page and i was like all right because i get kind of nervous flying and i was just praying the whole time and it was an excellent flight and i had a long talk with god and i'm just crying and she's like going, oh he's freaking out over there but anyways long story short was there was a story of this boy he goes and he he's hunting i don't know if he's hunting or he's just in the wilderness he grab he finds a nest with an eagle's nest and has an egg in it and in that nest, he takes out the egg and he brings it home. While he brings it home, he puts it underneath a hen in this chicken coop. So eventually the, the hen lays on the egg and then supports it, does whatever it does. And then next thing you know, the egg pops, you know, cracks and a little eagle comes out. Well, the eagle now is growing up around chickens. It's acting like a chicken. It's doing what chickens do, even though it's eagle. It doesn't know it's eagle. Well, one day, long story short, the eagle looks up and sees something soaring in the sky. And it realizes at that moment, it's not a chicken, it's an eagle. And your story kind of reminded me of that where maybe it was kind of like a chicken, but one day the light switch came on, your dream is like, that's it. You put a line in the sand, said, I'm going to do that. And you did. And you were that eagle flying and you do what eagles do. And there's a whole sermon I heard before with about eagles and stuff, but I think, thank you for sharing that story. That was super, super amazing. It's amazing. You talked for one hour straight. <laughs> well, I was not planning on talking for an hour, but then Jenna was like, our call's an hour. And I was like, okay, we, I loved no, it though. It was perfect. I loved it. You killed it. But when you think you're a chicken, you act like a chicken, but when you're an eagle, you soar. And one thing I heard that was so amazing, the eagles soar about three to four miles high. And the only other birds that soar that high are eagles. They'll never find no other bird. Only eagles do that. And that's one of the identities that God uses is the eagle. The other one is a lion. So it was really fascinating that your story, the chicken and the eagle story kind of just tied together. And I was like, wow. And then you're talking about dreams. I'm like, oh my goodness. Because when you had me close our eye, when you asked us to close our eyes, one of my dreams is building our home, not just it's a massive home, like a farm, barnuminium farm, farm style, and it's on land. I've had this vision of land for 22 years. I, I could see it. Every time I close my eyes, I see Florida pine trees and the, the bushes that we have, and that's what I see. And when I'm out delivering mail, I see it almost every day. It's on my mind. It's on my mind. It's been 22 years, but I'm like, it's coming. I just don't know when it's coming, though. Anyways, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Mm. Go ahead. Absolutely. Thank you, Megan. And she already, you guys, sent me that link. So I'm going to drop that in our thread. And as always, I want you to blow up our thread and share your takeaway from tonight. So, Megan, thank you so much, honey. You totally killed it. And I'm just so honored to call you my sister friend and that we get to do life together. And I love you. Well, thanks so much for having me on you guys. And for, you know, it's, I, I love getting to do this. I love being able to, you know, just share our stories, link arms. Um, and I hope that you got some nuggets out of that. Yeah, we sure did. All right, you. you guys, we will see you guys back on Pink Life Live next Thursday. Bye.